It all started roughly 25 years ago when I was a carp obsessed teen living, fishing and partying in the city that I developed a hunger to travel the world beyond the confines of London and explore wild and foreign waters. This is when I came across the first few images of a carp from Morocco. Those early images of immense big North African carp had just begun to circulate through the international carp scene from this weird and wonderful land. A land of profound historical and cultural importance. A land of great geographical diversity and constant surprises. This was the land that sent me on an epic adventure that since shaped the path of my carp angling journey to this day. Armed with an old set of rods, reels, buzzers and an old French ordnance survey map, I found myself lost in the Atlas Mountains with an old donkey I bought from a dodgy Moroccan farmer. Turns out the donkey had more interest in sleeping and eating than helping me with my fishing gear. So I gave up on the search of the lake and I ventured on through the Sahara and into the depths of Africa. A few years later I returned to Morocco, this time with more success. Finally I was standing on the red clay shores of the mighty Bin El Wadeen, with its crystal clear turquoise waters and snow-capped mountains, 15,000 acres of remote, wild, untamed paradise nestled in the green valley of the higher Atlas. The unknown element to this lake that still is strong today and the potential for it to produce a massive unknown fish had always made it so unique. Home to these wild, powerful and immaculately scaled bars of Moroccan gold and some epic mirrors man that had already broken the African record of 75 pounds. I'm still to find a carp water as magical and as far out as Bin El Wadeen. And so for the last 10 years, I've also enjoyed helping others to experience the adventure of fishing this crazy place. After a couple of tricky COVID years and a break to focus on other foreign waters, my good buddy, mega photographer and fellow angler James West and I returned to Morocco. James had also worked as a guide on Bin El Wadeen through one of the worst winters in Moroccan history. Faced with extreme low water levels, we had no idea what to expect on this return trip. But we took along a few cameras and well, here's a little adventure back to Bin El Wadeen. Morning folks, so I managed to get a bit of sleep there. So that was a long old journey of sleep. But anyway, morning. Take a look at the lake, it was too late last night to see it, but yeah, you can just make it out there. These water levels are really low, aren't they? Welcome to your breakfast. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, breakfast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Voilà, photo. Ça va bien, mais elle a mon 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 Double task in there. <laughs> Professional, sir. Professional. <laughs> Original Moroccan. <laughs> so we're going to load up the van now. Get down to the lake. This is the boat that I've got for us for the week, James. Old <laughs> <laughs> batteries. So this is where we keep all the gear. A serious amount of batteries in here now. There's a few of the motors up there already. All those waders, eh? All 
All right, let's get the ship. Okay. It might look like a scene of utter destruction right now. It's absolutely everywhere, but slowly this camp will take shape. We've got Saeed over here, just setting up the tents that we had made up out here. Wind's really picking up now as well. There's a lovely five-star toilet. Operation trying to get people fish in this place. So there's the camp as it is right now. Not being held by the wind, but um, get it sorted. So one of the hugely important things I find myself doing whenever I turn up to one of those big waters is walking around trying to select bloody rocks. And there's a reason for that. Now, I'm not really a fan of these fruit shoot drinks, but before we come out on any of these trips, I always find myself smashing a load of these back at the airport because they make perfect little markers rats with a little bit of soda tape around it so you can pick it out in the night. We've got our rocks here, making some use of the uh, thinking angler's leg core. Actually wrapping some leg core around these rocks, tying it off. And I usually use like a little five pound or eight pound fluorocarbon line. Tied to one of these lovely little fruit shoot bowls and that is a perfect little marker. Don't need to waste your money in there with these silly little edge blocks that cost a fortune and uh, that really seems to do the job. But yeah, a couple of fruit shoot bottles, a couple of rocks, a bit of uh, lead core wrapped around it, a light line that they can snap through if you get hooked up on it. And that's it, perfect, job done. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want beer and do we want some some tunes? Let's not take the tunes, but definitely the beer. Okay. We can bother any bait now or say that again. Do we bother with any baits now? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Let's just pull the boat and then get in from the front. Go on, then you get. Oh, there's mud. Moisture. Go on, you do driving. Oh, I'm doing the driving, am I now? Oh, dearie me. Already got Saeed's lovely, clean bottom on. Oh, muddied up. Go have our pants down. Ah! Yeah, we're, um, <laughs> real good. Down nice and deep straight away, dude. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> Got any 
no line. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't do it. Bro, what's going on? Why are we having nine meters here? What do you mean? Nine meters here? Look how close we are. Ah. In the bank. And I'm in eight over there. This is where I want to be fishing here. Well, you should have gone, you should have gone this side then, shouldn't you? No, but I thought we were getting eight and nine to get way out there. No, right. this, is just, this is about the distance we were getting it. No, I'm all the way out there to get nine meters. Well, yeah, it's, be yeah, it's because you're on the hump, aren't you? That's why. You've got the nice water deep water in your swim. What? Well, it's not what? <laughs> Do you want to swap tents now, Sal? No. <laughs> I really hope there's some goddamn fish around here. <laughs> oh! What? That was a fish! What kinds? No idea, it was right there. I saw it, I was looking straight at it. He's <laughs> so funny, he just said, oh, I hope there's fish here. Right over there, though. So here we go, first fish. We had a bit of a slow start yesterday. Just taking it all in, had a little look around with the boat. This is an area that I fished years ago. That did a few nice fish. And I th it seems as good an area as any really just to start off with. And actually the rods have only been in the water now for about an hour, so. Quite amazing that we've somehow landed on top of them. All good fishing. <laughs> we'll see. But this one doesn't feel too bad. Fishing about 10 meters, probably hard to see it, but quite a distance, about 150 meters out there. About eight to 10 meters, fishing four rods almost Elstow style, just in a real tight area. First fish. Here comes the rain. Actually feels pretty good, bro. It's pretty good, it's good now, isn't it? Nice fish. How about that? Looks quite a nice fish as well. Now that is a beautiful first Moroccan fish of the trip. And my foot's stuck in the mud, so <laughs> there's no getting out of this just yet. <laughs> That is a sick fish. Yeah. It's absolutely fucking nailed. Is that on your German rig? Yep. Nice. There we go. First fish of the trip. One absolutely amazing, amazing fish. This is why people come here. That is a perfect common, wild Moroccan common. And it's made me one seriously happy fella. And hopefully more to come as the week goes on, but for now, I'm absolutely over the moon with this. Hopefully we uh, get to bump into a few big ones this week. That's not a bad start. 
There we go. Good to say, Sam. Woohoo! Yappa dappa do. <laughs> <laughs> Holding this <laughs> already. Really? Mm. I'll say something again or not. Go on, go on, go on. Oh, I can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. Got a carp, Sam. Yeah. Got a carp. Got a carp. Carpy carp. Second fish. Doesn't feel as big as the, uh, the last one. This one was in about six meters. stuck <laughs> uh. would help you but I'm holding the camera <laughs> stuck in the mud I'm actually stuck mate I'm stuck <laughs> maybe I don't know I'm gonna have to take these waders off man wait 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 wait, wait. Come here again. Shoot. This is a little lively little fella. We're gonna get him back. So that was the second fish of the trip. What a lovely start. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah yeah. Put you back. So that you can roll off, mate. Oh, it's so good to have a decent run. <laughs> Especially have a winter back in England, blanking my arse off, and to have a run like that. Oh, it's <laughs> so refreshing. Get your heart going what again. It's like to have a proper run in that long. It's not not a big one, but it's the first fish. It's the first fish, mate. It's all good. There's a bit of a belly to it. Any yeah. Than I thought, actually. <laughs> Come on, go. Come in it, Come on. I can't go any further out. You're stuck in that clay. <laughs> I am stuck. <laughs> Let's bring him into you. Whee! 
Yeah, that's a nice fish, dude. That's not bad. Well done. I'm happy with that. Woo! <laughs> I love clay so much. That is prime quality clay. Apparently people come out here and pay a lot of money for... Uh, Believe it. Come out here and spend a week just rolling around in this clay. Right. Oh, I'm out of breath. There's absolute chaos here. We've got fish in the nets down there. A nice one in that one. And actually this one must have been screaming off for a while. Just caught up with it now. Is that receiver not working, James? Not over a hill. Not over the hill. I'd like to think it's a decent one. Yeah. Definitely not coming in like a pasty, that's for sure. I would have thought that bright yellow jumper of yours would just be sending it to the other side of the lake. <laughs> this is the Morocco carp experience that saw everybody else having when I was here. I never had it. <laughs> and you were working as a guide. Well done, buddy. Chunk. <laughs> is it crop nice over there? Spread a krill active. <laughs> Did the job real quickly. <laughs> bye bye. It's amazing condition, aren't they? Shattered, right. eh? Shattered. Let's do the next one. <laughs> Just there in the net. <laughs> seen that before. It's amazing, isn't it? It's got some interesting colorations on it. Might have been a glass carp, or is a glass carp. I don't know. They lose their coloration, so I've grown some glass carp myself as they get older. But it's a cool carp. Yeah, it's I'm a real cool one. <laughs> I love it. Chunky. Okay, I'm a boy. Can you let me make this look a little bit more, prof <laughs> a little bit more professional? <laughs> Got bed chair half done and <laughs> all over the place. Not that bad. Oh, you yeah. Not that bad at all. That was a double run. So a 40 in the in the net down there. And as I was trying to play that one in, this rod screamed off. And I've now got no rods left in the water, so this one's a little bubba. Not big. Here we are. Gotta have a look at that big one in the net down there. Right, here we go. What an amazing session this is turning out to be. Ben Aldean's always had the potential to do big fish. You wouldn't come out here hoping to uh, break any records, but it's got a massive head of very, very lovely big fish. We had a 93 pound common years ago. That was caught in a net that we, uh, we found in the market and weighed. So he's always had the, uh, the potential to, uh, to break a few records, man. This is by no means going to break any records, but it's still a wonderful big 40. Um, that was the target, I guess. I've never really been too into weights, but uh, any 20 kilo fish when you come out to these foreign waters is always a, a nice goal. And um, I'm absolutely made up with this one. So we're going to quickly get her up, have a look at her. 
and uh, slip her back. Yeah. What a fish, Sam. Amazing Brilliant fish, man. eh? Big mama. Day two, and there's a 20 kilo fish. Absolutely chuffed with that. Amazing, what a beautiful, beautiful place. Low water levels and these fish are still as healthy and hard fighting as ever. And I'm over the moon to be here. So let's get her back. Well, what an amazing fish. So early on in the trip, but that's made my trip already beautiful. That is a beautiful bar of gold. Slip her back. Fantastic. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, <Ben. laughs> Well, I was just trying to get a nice early morning scenic shot and the rod's ripped off, so <laughs> what a start to the day. I think quite a few fish have just turned up on the spot out there. We went out last night just before beds and put about 50 kilos of maize out there and a big spread of uh, a big spread of boily. And it's been a really quiet night, but uh, the two rods just ripped off at the same time. And uh, just a classic, beautiful common from Bin El Adin. in the morning sun. Let's slip her back. Go on, girl. So that's the quickest, the quickest run I've ever had out here. Having just literally been out in the boat, dropped it. Just got back, got the rod back on the buzzer and it ripped off. Let's get this guy back. There you are. Beautiful fish. Not as big as that 20 kilo you had though. No, we need a few more of those, don't we? Yeah. A couple of more Moroccan big mummers. Big mama. Big mama. <laughs> Thank you.
Always return it back to the lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just just for fun, not, not to not to eat them. Yes, we love the fish. We love them. I hope now. I mean, if we have a miracle and some rain. Look, how many key how many key cones had the makla? Had those the buoys? Had those can solve the problem? Had the makla? Which can solve? It's a cup, we It's a cup, we we. 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 Second fish of the day. We had an audience of about 40 people then that suddenly just turned up. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So this fish is famous. Well done little fella. There we are. Say hello rabbit. Let's put her back. There she goes. Just a little baby this time. Well, while Sam's been catching all the fish in the lake and me taking pictures of all the fish for him and in between that I've been quietly catching a few fish of my own nothing as big as Sam's um, but I did manage to catch a BEO mirror which is very rare well it depends who you are, some people it's easy, some people it's not um, very individual I find, lots of moon scales and stuff on them yeah, well done, it's amazing they are extremely rare not the biggest fish in the lake but what a beautiful fish though. More people have caught 20 kilos and they have mirrors in here. So I'll take that. It's my second one I've ever caught from here. And it's got little white flecks to its tail as well. Stunning cool. fish. I'd say one one in, one mirror in every 100 commons in Something here. Something like so, that, yeah. yeah. So that's bloody, yeah. it's impressive. Well done. Stunning fish. Brilliant, brilliant. Well done, man. Thank you. Right, there you go. Last look at her before we put her back. Her or him, one of the two, who knows. Pretty fish. <laughs> yeah. Well on, mate. Nice late afternoon common. Bigger one for me. Not as big as Sam's though. Well Look done, man. Look at the size of that tail. <laughs> and that <laughs> dorsal is ridiculous. Huge. Wow, that dorsal is crazy. I thought what hell it did. 
beautiful fish. You were screaming the uh, 50s, 60s. <laughs> yeah, not to be. <laughs> well done, anyway, mate. Off you go. Sweet. Classic B.O. fish. Nice, did it scrap well as well? Oh, well, yeah, it did scrap well, but once I thought I might have a decent one on the end, I did kind of wuss out a little bit. <laughs> played, it, played it quite softly. It's paid off though, that yeah. move, hasn't it, yeah. really? I tennis courted it, as Sam likes to call it, <laughs> which I wasn't doing originally. Just spread a, load, a light spread of maize and stuff around the area, and then just concentrate the maize and the boily on the spots where I dropped the baits. Oh, that's good fishing. So you were seeing bigger fish boshing a little bit further out, yeah, eh? yeah. and just went a little bit deeper, and it's yeah. made a big difference. And it's worked. Just goes to show, doesn't it? Well done, man. Sweet. Smashed it. Cool. Job done. Nice. Got another one. I just read a message from him saying he's got a special one in the sack. Good morning. Give a little bit of a low down then. Well, sat here playing the second fish of the night. It's early morning. I must look like a an absolute wreck. Hardly slept. <laughs> um, but I'm not complaining. It's another beautiful morning. In that sack there, I have something very special. One of the targets for uh, for anyone that comes out to Morocco is is to get get through to one of the uh, one of the mirrors. The mirrors out here are absolutely beautiful, but they're completely outnumbered by the commons. If I was to put a, a figure to it, I'd probably say maybe one mirror to every 100 commons. So the mirrors are extremely rare. And at about four o'clock this morning, I had an absolutely screaming run. And fortunately in that sack there is a lovely big footy scaled. So I'm a very happy chap. Quite excited to get the photos done and have a proper look at it. So I was half asleep when I caught it. But yeah, another beautiful morning. The sun hasn't yet just come up above the mountains over there. I feel like I've been on a, a Glastonbury weekend. I'm washed in need of a sleep and absolutely shattered but it's beautiful we're having a good session aren't we yeah I can feel my eyelids on my eyeballs right now but it's good 
You look as bad as what I look, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I can't work out if you're looking extremely tanned or you've just got absolutely covered in this clay. Bit of both. Bit of both. Eh? <laughs> Bit of both. Or severe bit of sunburn from yesterday. I don't think I'm as bad a sunburn as I thought. No? No. You're being alright? Yeah. Yeah. You know when you've got a special fish, you've tied one too many in knots in the sling. I've been so lucky to get a beautiful, beautiful Bin LD mirror and a fully scaled at that as well and it's completely made my trip really. I'm a very happy chap so let's get her up and have a look at this amazing thing. Absolutely stunning fish. This is why people travel to Morocco. That is such a wonderful fish. And I'm a very lucky chap. Well done, Sam. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. That's maybe as far as they want to a lifetime sort of fish from here, isn't it? Oh, it's just so special. I, I, when I was here for six months, I never saw anyone catch a fish that pretty. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you were here for a long time, weren't you? Yeah. I lived, lived here. Wow. Lived the Moroccan life, and I never <laughs> saw a fish like that. <laughs> well, I'm so happy. So happy. But let's get it back, eh? There we are, a Moroccan fully in the morning sun. Fishing doesn't get any better than that. The sun Fantastic. Is, the sun is literally now just poking through. That is such a special fish. Ah, oh, I'm one happy guy. Really, absolutely made up with this. Thank you so much. There's the fish bosh out behind me. Let's let this one go. And hopefully bag a few more. Go on, darling. Another mirror. Considering how hard it was to catch these when I was here last time, that too, absolutely amazing. But this was a little bit different from the rest of the fish we've had. It's been a bit battered. I'm fairly sure by the scratch on its head, it's been in a Moroccan fisherman's net. <coughs> yeah, these nets are. Uh, it's the harsh reality of um, what we do, aren't they? Really. I mean, we share the. Uh, Naturally so as well, we share the lake with the local Moroccan community and they very much depend on the fish stocks in here as their, as their means of income and, and food I suppose, so they don't target the carp, although occasionally they do catch the carp in the nets and uh, this poor fella looks like he's, um, well actually I say poor fella, he's one of the lucky ones, yeah, he's got away one. but yeah that's definitely net damage, poor thing but yeah fair enough eh, these guys need to yeah. um, they need, they need to provide food for their families and, and make some money and, as we all do so obviously as European carp fishermen we don't like to see this but you know, fish are put in here to, uh, to provide
provide food for the local community. So. Along the wind came a Moroccan in his little boat. That was video recording him. And I didn't realise how close he was coming to the bank. And he took out my rods. And in the process, broke my legs. Great. Give me a rock and style. Fish of the trip for me. Oh, fingers crossed, eh? It's got a big old head on it. It's got a big belly, it'll be a, the biggest, which I can't, I haven't seen it properly yet. Look at those god rays coming through over the mountains, though. I know, it's spectacular. Yours is going now. What? You didn't see me get this in the net because as, uh, as Sam was filming me, his rods went off. But eventually, after a good, good bloody long time, it did actually get in the net, and here it is. Ugh. That's an angry fish. <laughs> One angry fish. Wow. Fairly sure it's a big male. I dropped a couple of rods short after all that mud that got kicked up yesterday with that crazy wind, and well, it works. The nets have been tend to tend to favour the, the the shallow areas when the mud comes up. Because they like to go in there and dig around in what's being churned out. Well, that theory was proven correct, eh? 
Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, absolutely mega. It's a lot of muscle in this fish. Heavy. I think it's a male fish. Or? I think so. I yeah. Think, well, the size of its fins in that, and the fact it hasn't got a big belly like the rest of them because they've got spawn in them. I'm fairly sure it's a male. There's some massive could be fish washing out there. It's well oh. behind you. Well done. Thank you. The northern wind came in about like two-ish and then along with the wind it's now brought rain. But I have got a big one in the neck. So for this rain to, to go over to do some pitches. As you might tell, conditions have changed a little bit. Just a few hours ago, we were in shorts and t-shirt. Now we're dressed like it's winter. But the weather front has brought in the big mamas. That's a big Moroccan mama. Look at that. Pleased yeah. with that. Mega mate. <laughs> Love it. This Quick. weather's pretty dire though. I think it's, yeah, it's uh, this is set to last all night yeah. as well. So it's gonna be fun getting those rods out again. Yeah. Do a few pitches quickly and then get it back and try and get some rods out. Oh, I'm chuffed for you, man. Well Thank done. You, dude. That's brilliant. Well done, man. I'm so chuffed for you, James. Cheers, man. Well, this is quite an exciting moment really. At the one end of Bin El Adin, you have a you have a barrage and below that barrage you've got about a 200 meter dam wall that drops down to this river. Now we've always known that this river's here 
But for almost 25 years, we've uh, we've been trying to get permission to fish down here. It's actually owned by the military and the uh, the Moroccan police. You're not allowed any cameras down here, and there's no netting that goes on down here. No one's allowed to fish this bit of water here. We've always known that there's uh, the odd carp down here. I think they must have escaped from Bin Al Adin as fry and probably washed through and ended up in this river. But we're told that there's some absolutely massive fish. I mean, someone's saying there's 30 kilo fish in here. You know, we, we can't be sure if that's correct or not, but um, it, it just, it, it turns out that we've just been given permission to fish down here. So it so happens that we've only got two days left and I kind of feel right now we haven't got enough time to really fish this properly. So this is going to be hopefully uh, the next trip, which is uh, an exciting one because it's never been fished and it'd be pioneering a, a new river, so to speak. And who knows what's in there. So yeah, for now, we've just come down and had a little bit of a recce and a little look around. And um, yeah, very excited to give this a try one day in the near future. Get out of it! Hey. Hey. No! No! Go away! No! 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 Oh, God's sake! It won't go away! I can't make it go away, Sam! Yeah! 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 Ah. Ah. Hey! 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 You, I'm watching you. Yeah, got a cough on your bike. Woken up to fish all over us. After two very, very, very quiet days. So on the early morning wood collecting duties, walking along the, the shore around here, we've had so much driftwood washed in with all the heavy wind and the rising water levels. This lovely one's uh, put by to say hello. It's been a real quiet few days. I think all the rain that's coming down from the mountains has really brought in a lot of cold water and it's actually put the fish up in the layers. So we've been struggling a little bit. So that 
it is a really positive start to the day and there's already a lot of fish showing over the markers so looks like it could be an eventful day let's get this one back Moroccan fish. It's been very quiet over the last few days. Very quiet. It's just started picking back up again. Sam managed a few this morning and my rod eventually went off. It was a nice fish. It's quite a bit small, isn't it? Yeah, it's got a belly on it, that's for sure. Happy with that. Lovely one. A few pictures with Sam. Little Sammy. <laughs> get her back. Good stuff, dudes. Hopefully some more bigger ones will come. Day. we've had about four or five of these about this size already this morning uh, the weather's switched again it's been pitched down with rain like mad but uh yeah we're hoping for that last minute last day biggie but in the meantime these have been great fun let's get it back eh? So, so much ah. like to kind of stand up. <laughs> it's kind of a shame we can't kind of put this sort of shit ah. in the video. <laughs> Should do. Oh yeah, I suppose we could do. Yeah. One bit of this, me sat down playing it, it could be quite fun. Oh, here we have Sam, sat down on the last day, because he can't ah. be fucked to stand up anymore. <laughs> well, I saw you yeah. sat down and I thought, well, well, that's quite nice. <laughs> well, to be fair, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Walking over this, this bloody clay for two weeks. It's yeah. just, just nice to just not. <laughs> Got blisters on my feet. Hungry. <laughs> so. And Sam let me pull my car out the net. Wow, <laughs> You've had enough big fish last few days anyway. Get too cocky now. Just to let it go. Thank you. What's this? Last day big is it, Sam? Last day eighty. <laughs> this could be a world record, mate. I've been building up for this over the last two weeks. Saving the best of last. Saving the best of the last. Shatters. Got hardly any strength to play it. But I've just been sat on the floor playing it. Well, thought this one was going to go about at least 60, 70. <laughs> but it's still, <laughs> still a bit of fun. <laughs> she lacquers. Let's get it back.
a fine all night and I've been absolutely blessed with these two amazing commons, the lovely little bracer commons. Let's get them up and have a look. I'm still getting battered by the rain. Yes. <laughs> I can feel it on my head. <laughs> What a lovely finish to an amazing trip. It's been pretty special, hey James? Sure has been. All our targets have been achieved. Yeah. More we've achieved more than we expected to achieve. Dreamed to achieve. Yeah, it's been pretty, pretty cool. But what a lovely ending as well. And who knows, we've got tomorrow morning as well. So let's see what uh, tomorrow brings. But for now, possibly signing out with these two and yeah. Happy days. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Bye bye. Thank you, old chap. Oh, it's so romantic. I'm just sitting by the lake. So do you think there's any weather that we haven't fished through this session? We've had snow, we've had rain, we've had sun to the point of dehydration and severe sunburn at times. Yeah, I can feel my nose is still peeling now. Yeah, you've got a Rudolph red nose there. <laughs> um, <laughs> relentless wind. Relentless wind. Let's highlight that one. Hard work getting those rods out at times, isn't it? Really? Well, you have to get it out before lunchtime. If you don't get it out by lunchtime, the wind comes and it just screws you. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you wake up in the morning with this kind of. There's no sitting back and letting the day slowly progress into a nice peaceful one. It's wake up and like go, 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 get the rods out there before the wind turns up. And then when the wind does turn up, it can blow so much, it blows stuff through your lines and then you, and it wipes all your lines out. Yeah, it's hard graft, but uh, yeah, all worth it in the end, really. Yeah, it's worth doing it because the rewards are there. Absolutely. And it's interesting this time round, it's for the first time with all the rain that came down and I think possibly the snow that's melting off from these mountains, there was an incredible amount of cold water coming in. And I remember we went through a stage of about three days where the fish just seemed to completely disappear. We weren't really seeing anything. The runs completely dried up. We had nothing for a couple of days. And then we went out with a sonar just to look over our spots to see if there was anything on there. And we got out over to where the marker was where we'd been applying the bait every day. And the sonar was absolutely black with fish. And they were just sat just below the surface, about two, three meters below the surface, weren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. So that was quite an eye opener. I've never seen that before here. And, uh, Obviously, I guess that's probably down to the cold water that was coming in and the upper layers were just providing more warmth for them. So they were just sat there. But yeah, they weren't feeding at all, were they really? Well, they did get back on the feed at the end and we did have a few. And you had two nice ones last night, didn't you? Yeah, last night. Quite lucky to have a couple of big ones. The last knock-ins really. Oh, oh goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. 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 Our Moroccan escort has decided that they wanted to go now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone around here is so lovely though. <laughs> so feeding it now, but it's that feeling of exhaustion and being feeling slightly weathered, but then also just feeling like, yeah, we came here and we smashed it and we had such a wonderful trip. We have had a really good trip. It's been lovely. And I feel like, you know, the, these fishing trips, it's not just, they're not, they're not just about coming and trying to catch a load of carp or the biggest carp. It's, it's spending time with a good friend and you, you essentially you're fishing as a team on these big waters, you know, it's, and you're kind of looking after each other as well, aren't you really? I mean, it's definitely it, sometimes you need to look after each other. Yeah. <laughs> always, there's always one of us at one point is having a bit of a, bit of a wobble and the other one's got to keep them going absolutely absolutely and i think that's quite unique in itself really just the the kind of highs and lows and you know the the picking your mates up 
and then your mate picking you up and you know trying to trying to get the most out of the trip but it's it's always a challenge but just a, a wonderful feeling at the end of it and yeah it is as i sit here now kind of talking over it with you and sipping a beer it, it all seems pretty pretty special really thinking back over what we've just done and yeah yeah, yeah definitely you think we'll come back next year yeah but i would probably say that below the barrage is much more oh, interesting the barrage completely forgot about the barrage well, that's going to be exciting, isn't it? Completely another world down there. It's like it's like a it's like a, an oasis when you go down there. Like it's, it's quite incredible. quite a bit like Mars sometimes over here. But you go around literally almost well, round the corner. Yeah. Go past the barrage. It's a it's amazing. Incredible. Yeah, and this is the barrage that's below Bin El Adin, you know. And so since 1992 there's been possibly small fry that have got through and dropped down into the next barrage below and those fish supposedly have just grown on and it's it's kind of patrolled and known by the military and the police so we've waited all this time and finally i don't know what's happened or why they've suddenly decided to let's fish it but they've uh, they've given us permission to fish it now and we just went down for a little recce and it's yeah as james said it's just spectacular it's completely different to this it's green and it's like a it's like a river almost, isn't it? Really. Well, it is the river. It's the it's the old well, it's the river below the the barrage. Yeah. The the the, the dam. The dam. <laughs> it's called yeah. the bar. Everyone calls it a barrage around here because that's French for a dam. I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited. So yeah, maybe that's the next trip. I mean, we'll see. Maybe we can combine a a few days here and do a week down there or something. Yeah. See how see how, yeah. see what happens. In the meantime, let's go and drink some more beers. <laughs> oh God, more please. Let's go to more a restaurant. Beer. Woo, beer, woo. I want to go to a restaurant and order about twenty dishes. Oh me, I want, to, I want steak. I want lovely, <laughs> lovely steak. That's what I want. The food, the food here is lovely, but it, it's weird when you're given, you're given your foods every day that you you don't you haven't really got a choice over. You've got no saying in what it is you eat. And one thing I've massively missed is having a bit of control over what it is I eat. So. We're about to go to a restaurant, get very drunk, and eat a load of foods and celebrate what was a really successful trip. Yeah. And I'll cheers to that, Ooh. man. No beer left in it, but we're. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jimbo. Ooh.